We had launched this, um, our first ever ad. We got free airtime on Hulu mm. on the internet TV platform. And so I'd made this little video of workers in a refugee camp in Kenya who were living under some of the most desperate circumstances. I mean, a dollar a day type poverty. We'd actually managed to get them to do work for Microsoft. Wow. Um, in this pilot program. And lo and behold, these young people in this refugee camp were doing competitive work and I just thought it was the most amazing thing and they were so inspiring. So we did this little video, we ran it on Hulu, it was like a public service announcement and I thought we would just get tons of donations, right? And instead, I got hate mail. <laughs> And this guy, Joe in Ohio, wrote me this email, and the subject line was, you are ruining America. And he said, you know, you're taking our jobs and sending them to Africans. And it really hit a chord because I, I both empathize with him, but I was also incredibly frustrated because I was doing this as a nonprofit. I'm, I was certainly not profiting from this, and these refugees were just barely eking out enough to survive. And so my initial instinct was to write a nasty email back, right? And I, I wrote that nasty email and then thankfully did not send it. Best advice I ever heard in business is if you're about to say or do something really nasty, <laughs> sleep on it. <laughs> it's usually not your better angels, right? Yes. Um, and so I slept on it, and the next morning I woke up and I thought, let me just Google Ohio unemployment statistics. And I did. And it turned out that Ohio had been extremely hard hit by the recession. And I thought to myself, Maybe this guy Joe lost his job. You know, who knows what happens? Like maybe his wife has cancer and he can't afford her treatment. Yeah. I mean, who knows, right? And so often when people are angry, it's because they're suffering. It's coming from a place of pain. So I thought, let me acknowledge Joe's pain. And I wrote a really nice email and I was like, Joe, I put this in the book. I was like, Joe, you know, I'm so sorry. Maybe you have a point. Maybe there's some way that we could do work in Ohio. Maybe there's a way our model could adapt itself here. And I'm totally open to your ideas and opinions. Joe wrote back with a really nice email. And he said, thank you for listening. I'm sorry I was rude before, but I just lost my job. My state has been really hard hit. We've seen a lot of factory closures. It totally changed the dialogue. Wow. And that actually inspired us to start our US program. It inspired me to go to my board and fight for us to do something domestically. My board had said, no, 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 we need to focus. We can only focus on international work. So it was a, it was a fight. And over the years, I finally managed to convince them and raise the money. But it started with that email. I just think it also speaks to who you are as a leader, though, to have the emotional reaction, to have <laughs> you know the foresight to go, all right, I'm not going to touch the computer anymore tonight, but then to go to your board and to fight what sounds like it took quite a while before you were able to get the uh, approval and the endorsement and the support to, to build out the programs here. And I think, you know, off camera, we were also talking about how important it is to not think you either help people in the developing world or you help them here. We so often think it's mutually exclusive, and that part of the current national dialogue is so frustrating to me because it's usually the same issues that drive poverty abroad that also drive them here at yeah. home, right? It is the same, it's the same cross-cutting issues, and therefore, I think organizations that work on poverty have an obligation to consider poverty here at home and abroad, and we, we shouldn't have to choose. We live in a global economy. Again, everything we touch, every everything we buy, the, the fibers and the clothes that I'm wearing, even if it says made in the U.S., Say, is very likely to have touched somewhere around the world. And if you know, if you like coffee or if you like pepper on your food or anything that's grown abroad, you have to realize we're part of this interconnected community. And therefore, we can't otherize human beings who happen to live elsewhere. And we also can't ignore the needs of, of human beings here at home. So I think I think we're taught to see the world through this very divided lens, and I think that's toxic. Yeah, I agree.